It's here, the last Saturday show of the year. We're doing a live show in Los Angeles, and we still got this content for you. We're answering your questions on today's show. Like the video, subscribe, smash that button, ring that bell, and enjoy the show. Unless one has an affinity for looking ridiculously foolish, it is wise not to stumble aimlessly into a fantasy football draft. The Ultimate Draft Kit from the Fantasy Footballers contains all the information you need to avoid the jeers of your enemies and to snuff out any glint of hope in their souls. Imagine the gasps those trouser-wearing turnips will emit as you make yet another triumphant draft selection. Imagine their tears forming a formidable puddle as you assemble an unstoppable force. The ultimate draft kit comes bursting at the seams with fantasy goodness. When you enter the draft room, you'll feel as if you were a monstrous beast let loose in a chicken coop. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. It's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, nasty boys and girls. I am your host for today, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright, joined by my best friend, Jason Moore. How you doing, best friend? Doing fantastic. Awesome. It's a Saturday show. Do we have anything going on tonight? We do. And so do uh, like 300 people in Los Angeles. Those are some lucky people. <laughs> You are, Jason, bringing up my spirits, wearing a Muth is Luth mm. t-shirt. You got to get Luth. Yeah, I mean, the last time we were talking about him, we're just... Yeah, it's, we weren't... It's hard. It's a little tough. We were kind of bad mouth in the... I don't know. The situation. The, yeah, yeah, the situation. The Definitely. talent is there. I love Pat Fryer Muth. Yeah, we love the Muth. We are recording this a, a bit early because we are doing the live show, so we had to travel and everything. But, of course, we got to get the podcast out. As scheduled on Saturday, so everyone may mow their lawns and do the chores and hit the gymnasiums. But can you believe that Deshaun Watson news or uh, what? Unbelievable. The suspension of hmm, games. games. I thought it would be. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, whatever. We're going to move on. But Ultimate Draft Kit, that is the only tool that you need for the draft season. UltimateDraftKit.com updating all the time when the Deshaun Watson news does break that will be updated basically immediately uh, including including the entire Cleveland Browns because look you know we're trying to project what's going to happen over the season and once we have further information we update such as Julio Jones being added onto the Tampa Bay Buccaneers we we put him in immediately those so just it's always always changing and morphing around their ultimatedraftkit.com if you do not have it Follow us on the socials, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. You can find Jason at Jason FFL. I am at FF Hitman. And Andy is at Andy Holloway. The quick question of the day, Jason. At what point do you start to consider someone to be injury prone? Uh, when they've hurt me personally. From, yeah, if I've drafted that's them. The real, <laughs> that's the real answer. Honestly, 100%. If you had Christian McCaffrey... In one of these last two years, that dude, like he's he's made out of glass. Well, if you've he had him injury prone, if you've had him both years, oh gosh. he's one hundred percent injury prone. But he's made out of peanut brittle. In reality, uh, injury prone isn't isn't necessarily a thing. You know, uh, I, you know Matthew Betts, our injury expert, made some notes on this. When injury prone is more of a reaggravation of existing injuries. If you're a soft tissue issue guy who constantly through a career is really dealing with hamstring issues and and uh, you know the quads and things like that, that becomes a little bit of an injury pro nature. There's there's uh, medical you know data to show that injuries have a chance of happening again. You know, right. a typical re injury rate on a, a previous injury like a hamstring injury is thirty percent across the same season. Biggest risk being within the first two weeks or uh, Dalvin Cook's shoulder injury, uh, uh, shoulder dislocations, 
those typically are around 20% chance of having that re injured. Now, not a worry with Dalvin Cook because he'll just wear the, the device, device. Yes. and dominate. <laughs> we don't, he don't need no shoulder. The <clears throat> device. But, um, you know, there's other players. Like, I think my favorite example is Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen was yeah. super injury prone because – and and the reason he was injury prone or or thought of as injury prone is because he had a myriad of different injuries: a PCL in college, a fractured clavicle, a shoulder injury. Remember the uh, and then the, the, this is the big one: the lacerated kidney. What in the world? I mean, dude could not stay healthy. But if you actually think about that, those are completely different fluke injuries that just happened. We're playing a violent sport. I mean, we're not. Oh no! We're like chilling, I, no, I am, feet up. I am way too soft for yeah. for that life. I mean, I won't even watch football like without a air conditioning. Oh, like I'm not going to the backyard not. to watch football. That's, no, it might be uncomfortable. Yeah, and I'm not dealing with that. So, uh, but these guys are warriors. Yes, and so you know these injuries <laughs> can happen. But when you've got those type of things where uh, a player has a bunch of different things that is just happening, like like Christian McCaffrey. Totally different things, or even Saquon last year, where you know he he goes and accidentally r steps backwards, rolling his ankle yeah. on another player. That's not a player being injury prone. That's you could say like, oh, he's got terrible luck. Yes, you can say. Don't that. gamble. Um, <laughs> you know things like that. But sure. uh, no, I I I worry more about degenerative issues. You know, sure. when Todd Gurley had a knee issue twice in the same knee, and then you know those started talking about, well, he's, it's degenerative. Yeah, that's – it's not injury prone. It's just you've got an injury that's going to continue to get worse. Correct. And we do have a full slate of analysis on all of the injuries from Matthew Betts, the injury report inside of the Ultimate Draft Kit. News and notes from around the league. Again, we are recording a little bit early, so lights are on the news – as of right now, but Geno Smith is working with the first team offense on the opening day of Seahawks training camp. I think that this is like like low key great news. Yeah, that Drew Locke is playing with the the second string because the way that Peach Cobbler up there just chomping around was talking about Drew Locke, he was really pumping the tires up trying to convince us all that Drew Luck is fantastic. If he were in the draft, he'd be the number one quarterback uh, in, in this year's draft class, yada, 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 of, holy crap, has Pete Carroll really believe this and is going to start Drew Locke? Because we've seen Drew Locke enough to know that he's not that dude. He was surrounded by talent in Denver, couldn't do anything with it, gets beat out by Teddy Bridgewater. because they. If, and if you recall last year, you, like the the way that the year started of it was it was a camp battle with Bridgewater mm -hmm. and Drew Locke. So if you have this kind of sense and memory of well Drew Locke he played, finished the season. He played a lot. You're like no, it was Teddy Bridgewater's team because he was better than Drew Locke. Yeah, Drew Locke played three he started three games last year. That's it. It was the last three games, not a big deal. Um ironically, Geno Smith also started three games last right. year. What if I told you Geno Smith was good? In those starts, he uh, well, I wouldn't believe you if you said <laughs> <laughs> you're a wise you. man. But what we do know is DK Metcalf was okay with Geno Smith. I mean, one of the games it was basically this 90 yard house call touchdown, and that was all of his production. But DK was okay when Geno Smith was the guy. It would DK fell off when Russell Wilson managed to get back on the field and his hand wasn't completely healthy. So if Gino is the guy for Seattle, this is great news that you don't have to be as concerned. Yeah, I have Gino Smith statted for the majority of the work this year. I mean, he he was he wasn't great, uh but he wasn't terrible. He had a QBR rating of 107.4 through that uh in those 3 games it had uh I think four or five touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, it wasn't great, but he didn't play terrible. So he's not Drew Luck. I would expect him to win the job. Uh, yeah, what should be a little bit concerning for DK Metcalf is he is doing the hold in. DK Metcalf, Debo Samuel, Deontay Johnson. Uh, at the time of this recording, no contracts for them. They are holding in. I expect that 
DK and Debo will get resolved sooner than later. Deontay, th at least the way that the Steelers talked about it, that one seems a little bit sketchier. Yeah, I, I you know the the reality is the contract situation is different with the new CBA versus you know if you've been playing fantasy for a while and you worry about missing games, it takes a lot more to miss games now. The hold in, they're there, they're not even missing practice. Right. Um, they still could, but that would that would take that would take some gall and some gumption uh, to yes, sit there would. on the active roster and, and somehow not play. So I expect Debo's to get done. DK Metcalf, don't forget, I, I know he is back at practice holding in, not practicing, but he also did have a foot issue this offseason. They say it's all, all gone, you know, that he's ready to go, but since he's not practicing, it's like I'd like to see him practicing after the foot issue. Um, yeah, I mean, really, if you look at the ultimate draft kit, and you see a higher risk rating for those players. Right. It's just because until that situation is resolved, there is a non-zero chance that those players try to, you know, take it into the season. All right. If, if we have the hype train drop, go ahead and hit it for me because this one is – This one hurts me. All right. I will do it. I will do it. <laughs> nice. We didn't double hit it. Uh, news out of Buffalo. Jamison Crowder is – He's missing some time here with general soreness. <laughs> yeah. Like I I get it. I, I'd be I Bruce. wake up every day with general soreness, my <laughs> man. So I am there. I understand it. But in his absence, Isaiah McKenzie has been a stand up quote, stand out almost every single day, and that's coming from an athletic beat reporter. It's not coming He's, from one reporter. And are that's, you sure? That's what – like this one, you know, you've got to watch camp speak. You've got to filter this stuff out. Most of this is all nonsense. And this is still just fluff and hype. But at the same time, the reason this one hurts is because, um, you know, we had a mock draft a while ago. I, I, I took James Crowder at the end. I, I view um, Isaiah McKenzie or, or viewed uh, – it's it's starting to change. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie is a really important – uh, special teams player. Right. And so I, I, I did view them bringing James Crowder in to come and play the Cole Beasley role and keeping Isaiah McKenzie in the valuable role he already had. It just wasn't valuable for fantasy. But the reason this hurts is because I've always loved Isaiah McKenzie. Last year when Cole Beasley missed a game, it was like, oh, he's got his opportunity. The year before when Cole Beasley missed games and he had the opportunity, he was great. Week 16 at New England, 11 for 125 and 2. Yeah, and so I, I really like him and – I have not been taking a lot of shares, and so I'm a little sure. sad. Because I'm I'm thrilled that he has been dominating. I hope he wins the job. I hope he gets the opportunity. If he does, I think he's going to be very, very good. Um, but I'm just sad because I haven't been on it when I've liked the dude. All right. Let's get into your questions. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. Really, Jason. Really sounded like they were my questions. <laughs> <laughs> you really <laughs> emphasize that they were my questions. Here, I was so. going, this is the universal. Okay, so what is the... Do you have a question for the podcast, Jay? Uh, maybe by the end. Maybe by the end. All right. It, producers, do you have a question for the oh, show? Here's my, here's my... Okay, here's a question from... I was uh, talking to the producers. Oh, uh, well, I, I don't care about them. All right. To Jason, this question is from Jason Moore. Yeah. Um, with the recent injury to Ryan Jensen, center for the yeah. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, having also lost other offensive pieces, what is your view of the impact this could make on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? This so, it, it we, we didn't bring it up because we don't have full we don't have the full news yet. We know what we do know about the injury is the helmet slam. He went down apparently. The team kind of gathered around him. The which cart came out. When when the team comes around, like these players, they know. I mean, like they know each other, and they can kind of sense a bad injury. So hopefully they're wrong and they're just being cautious. But I mean, that hit to an offensive line, like that level of a player, that certainly impacts things. I mean, they have enough time to try to figure something out before before the season starts. Uh, I, as of right now, I'm not modifying like my Brady stats, my Fournette stats, but it is definitely something to keep an eye on. Okay. This question, not from Jason, comes from uh, off the website Nick in Milwaukee. Will George Kittle's value go up or down with Trey Lance at quarterback? 
his average draft price will go down. Um, I believe that he will be less desired, and, and we've seen that. He's dropping into the fifth, sixth round sometimes in uh, best ball leagues. Where will his actual value go up? I mean, value is based on where you're drafting him, so I think it, it kind of will. If he falls from the you know the third round where he's lived over the last few years to the fifth round, I don't see him taking a major step backwards. He can stretch the field at the tight end position, and Trey Lance is willing to – throw the ball deep so yes, I, I think it fits what Kittle does um, and if he drops an average draft position then that means his value goes up we do have some numbers uh, we have 35 games George Kittle has played with Jimmy Garoppolo and 17 games he has not played with Jimmy Garoppolo his numbers in those 17 games without Jimmy are actually up with, Pre like, pretty significantly yeah we're talking like he's playing with CJ Beathard and Nick Mullins, we're we're talking about and Trey Lance and Trey Lance were three points a game better, a half a reception better, and just and nearly twenty yards better per game. I mean, I would seventeen be, games is not nothing. Uh, I, no, 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 that's a large sample, and we've we uh, George Kittle is a dominant physical force. It doesn't yeah. matter who the quarterback is; he's going to dominate on the field for whoever is throwing the ball. It's like, oh, who should I get the ball to? Maybe the dominant guy. That makes sense. I would be curious because I know that these are simple splits, just in and out with uh, Garoppolo. But Debo's been known to miss some time over the last few sure. years, so I wonder how how much the missing quarterback correlates with that. Because I do know when Debo is gone, Kittle has much more inflated numbers. That being said, I I don't think Trey Lance takes a big hit to his production, which I think that's the heart of the question. Does his production go up or right. down? I think his production stays doing what George Kittle's been doing. Instagram, Tim wants to know, well, first, bonjour from Germany. Oh, bonjour. So, bonjour. Keep Justin Herbert in the eighth or Trey Lance in the 13th. This is a, a fun one because we love Trey Lance. Yes. But this is Justin Herbert. It even... Even my desire for Trey Lance on every single one of my teams, I don't think I would pass on Justin no, this, Herbert in the eighth. This isn't close. I mean, just uh, Trey Lance could be a top five guy. Right. Justin Herbert is guaranteed to be a top five guy. Justin, Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert's my quarterback two right now, and he could be the quarterback one very easily. Uh, on the sleeper app, his current ADP is the back of the third round. So, I mean, a substantial discount for Justin Herbert. I mean, quarterback's going in the eighth. You know, Brady, Rodgers. So, and yeah, what matters to me is not the quarterbacks that are going there, but what are the other positions going there? When you get to the eighth fair. round, you're taking flyers on your running backs, on your wide receivers. You're not, you know, we talk a lot about the opportunity cost. The reason we don't draft Justin Herbert, you know, in, or, or even Josh Allen in the third round is because there's great players there. You're missing out on something awesome. In the eighth round, there's some good shots you could take, but they're not known guaranteed commodities so yeah take justin herbert's upside in the eighth a couple of people want to talk about fab we got giuseppe fabulous from, from ontario canada oh bonjour yeah there we go hey ballers first year of using fab for my home league looking for tips and strategies uh, about it and so the overall look if you're new to fantasy football and uh and talk about fab what it is it's a different way to handle your waiver wire so normally uh, better when? It yes yeah well we we'll get there we're just mm -hmm. we're given sure. the the yeah. facts right now that's what I which was doing. I guess actually it's better uh so usually the waivers the way that they happen is whoever has the worst record they have the first pick of the waivers for tiebreakers and so on and then it like once you use that first overall pick you rotate to the bottom of the list and so on and so forth what Fab is is that's a free agent budget and what that gives is a way for everyone to, regardless of your win-loss record, have a shot at anybody you want on the waiver wire. You go in and you make a blind bid of, say, for an example, week one, running back X explodes, looks like he's going to be the dude for his backfield. You can go in and say, well, I'm going to, I don't really believe this is going to, I don't believe it's real, so I'll make a 15% or 15 of my fab dollars or points, whatever you want to call them, to put that player on my team. And someone else drops 55. 55! And so the person with the 55, they would get the player off the waiver wire. It's just, it 
evens the playing field that everyone gets to make a choice of when you want to go in on players. How hard do you want to go after a player on the waiver wire? It makes it's it it takes some convincing of to get people in on it, but it really adds a, a whole new layer of strategy each and every week, and it's more fun. That's the issue. It's like okay, there is more strategy, but there's so much more fun. Yeah, because the waivers is really like oh, yes. you know, usually when it's in a, a just a waiver claim system, you already know who's getting the number one pick because it's whoever's highest on the waiver report. Maybe you hope he doesn't take them. Like that's the only drama. Is like oh maybe right. he chooses someone else and it'll go to the second guy. But when you're when everyone is bidding and you can't wait to see what every single person in your league thought that Cordero Patterson was worth early last year and someone paid up and you're mocking them mm -hmm. and then it goes on and it just stays great all year. It is so much fun. It's fun every week. It's fun every day when it roll when you know it, it's just a great time. But I do have one issue. Okay. With whoever created the fab system. Do tell. You said that it is a free agent budget. Right. F-A-B. Yes. Well, that would work. We call it fab. Yes. And that that answers the... It is a free agent budget. Yes. But no, no, no. They were like, well, I've come up with this great system. I call it the free agent acquisition budget. Right. F-A-A-B. And you could just say fab. It's like the acquisition is unnecessary. Correct. It should just be a free agent budget. And that's why I dropped it out. Yes. Why did they cr – like, why did they, they – they made a wheel. They invented the wheel, and then they put, like, they put things on the outside of the wheel that make it a bumpy ride. They just bedazzled it. <laughs> yeah, like, like, don't need it. Yeah. Free agent budget. Uh, and then there was a follow-up off of YouTube from Ty. says, how much fab should each team get at the start of the season? I mean, this is just – it we go with a hundred. I think that's pretty standard. You can do really whatever you want. When when we give our advice throughout the season, we try to talk about it in terms of percentage, which one hundred makes it very easy. Yeah, it makes it real because when we're like, hey, I'm going to go twenty percent, so that's twenty. Yeah, but, <laughs> quick we, math. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, that if you want to be more in line with our advice, you go with the hundred, and it's again, it's just so much fun. If you're watching the show, whenever the waivers run. And they run very frequently when we're recording. We all kind of go in there, like we we kind of forget yeah. about the show for a moment, and we go see what happened in our home leagues. It's a lot of fun. Now, getting back to Giuseppe, because I realized we described what Fab was, but didn't answer his question at oh, all. Oh yeah, for the tips and strategies. The tips and strategies for someone new. Uh, first things first. If this is new for your whole league, which I imagine it is, maybe you are the only new player. But assuming that this is new for your league. Spend a little bit more than you think in the beginning because people will be hesitant. Yes, and you'll they will. get everybody. Everyone wants to save and they're going to be like, oh, you know, they're, they're all new to it. So they're like, I'll pay five, I'll pay six, I'm going to pay up, I'm going right. to go $9. And it's like, just go 20. Get the guy. Mm -hmm. Because you'll see as, as the years go on that people get more and more aggressive. When they want their guy, they're going to drop 70% you know, yes. of their budget. Um, that's one tip. I would not drop all of it. That's another one. Like, Agreed. I always want five dollars left going into my playoffs. So when I get down to about five uh, free agent dollars, I am basically viewing it like I'm out of money and making zero dollar bids because I really want a few bones to play keep away. You know, if my opponent has is run, has run out of money and we're in the playoffs and he needs a defense. I get the defense. Right. He needs a quarterback to stream. I get the quarterback. And it, it it can really make an impact worth more than whatever the $5 that you're spending in week 12, 13, 14 are going to do for you. This one's off of Instagram from the Dochala Day. Nailed it. Of course. After Aaron Rodgers spoke so highly of Alan Lazard, does that change his ADP? Um, For I a week. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that him necessarily saying that. Like the people over on Underdog uh, for best ball drafts, which are putting money on the line, people are becoming either more comfortable or at least just saying uh, accepting the risk of I'm going to take the shot. Lazard seems like he's going to be the number one guy. Like Julio was gone now. Like that's that was kind of the big domino to to fall, and like OBJ's out there, but. OBJ is not going to be ready. Not to, back, he's so. not going to be ready. To Will play football. Fuller? Will Fuller is the only name left that's like a, a major free agent piece. That and it's like would would Will Fuller going to Green Bay change how you feel about Lazard? Not really. Not no. for me. No. Okay. And so 
<clears throat> he's just yeah. I I think Lazard is extremely interesting, and it's it's not the way that Rodgers is talking. It's just you know things are shaking out that they are they are at a time that Lazard is now the de facto number one. Yeah, I mean it, this has already been happening. Lazard. Lazard has a higher ADP than Aaron Rodgers. He's being drafted right. ahead of of Rodgers in underdog, and um, I I have quite a few shares. I don't. This news is going to just be wisp in the wind. There's so much news coming out. Him talking positive of Alan Lazard is meaningless. He's done it before. Yeah, I mean this is don't don't worry about those little fun fluff pieces. But in your home leagues, Alan Lazard, at least at this point, still remains someone who should be a a pretty strong draft value on sleeper going in the double digit rounds. We'll we'll see if that holds up. All right, let's take a quick break and get back to more of your questions. <music> Off the website, Nick in Los Angeles. Got the 102 for a redraft. This is a full point PPR 10 team. How high is too high to draft Cooper Cup? There isn't a too high because if you took him at the 101 I'd be like, okay. I mean, he, he, wow. Okay, so he, he, he would even over Johnny T. He would. I wouldn't do that. Uh, I'm taking Cooper Cup at the three. I want John to the Taylor. I want Christian McCaffrey. Cooper Cup is my three. Um, but I don't think that there. I mean, when you're talking about a guy you're willing to draft at three, can you really say that there is a too high? Like, sure. He's he's so close there. But you're at the 102. If you prefer Cooper Cup to the uh, running backs there, then then have at it. I will say this. Historically speaking, the top scorers are the best running backs. The yes. best running backs outscore yes. the best wide receivers usually. Now, every now and then, a guy like, let's say, Cooper Cup <laughs> right? has one of the best, <laughs> most historical seasons of all time and will outscore everyone that – is doubtful to happen in back-to-back -back years. He's going to be awesome. I love Cooper Cup. I'm all in. But if I had to place money as to whether Cooper Cup outscores or just just general, will the number one wide receiver outscore the number one running back this year? I'd put my money on the running back. Right. Uh, off of Instagram, we got Dylan <coughs> saying, Dalvin Cook or Justin Jefferson? And does it change if this is full point PPR? So you're on the Same clock. team in fighting. You're, in the, you're on the clock, Jason. First round. It's Justin Jefferson. The first four picks okay. to me in almost all leagues, um, you know, obviously if this is a, a standard, no points per reception, then I would go Dalvin Cook. Half PPR, full PPR. Uh, I am Justin Jefferson as pretty much the fourth pick right now. My first four picks, it, it's almost not fun for me right. anymore because it's just like it's the same. Okay, yeah, and I understand. I'm, I'm a little bored with that. Off of Instagram, Luke says Mike Evans or Michael Pittman, <laughs> and, which um, is, to me, a question that uh, a month ago felt very easy, and I would say this is Mike Evans going away, but we are getting more and more information for Tampa Bay of Chris Godwin was not put on the pup list for training camp. What does that mean for his status going into the season? I don't know. They just added Julio Jones. How integrated is he in the offense? We're getting, you know, hype train already of they're using Julio a ton. What does that mean? You're like, so we are more variables have been popping up recently for Mike Evans. Meanwhile, Michael Pittman locked in the number one guy for the Indianapolis Colts uh, fighting for targets against Alec Pierce. Uh, maybe Paris Campbell, maybe Ashton Doolin, maybe Hines. Like these are all like I don't know about that. And, but and Michael Pittman is a stud. This is a <clears throat> I like this question, not because it's difficult. Right this, the, it, to me, it's easily Evans. It still is. It's still Even with everything that's going with on. with everything going on. It's still Evans. Um, that being said, it's not a crazy question at all. This is an up-and-coming third-year wide receiver who has a lot of things going his way. If you, you know, I won't be surprised in the slightest if he outscores Mike Evans this year. I don't have that projected. I think that the um, that the ceiling case for Mike Evans is still more touchdowns than the ceiling case for an ascended Michael Pittman Jr. 
you know, if if you had to say who could get 15 touchdowns, it it's probably Mike Evans, not Mike uh, Michael Pittman. Yeah, I would agree with that. So if the ceiling is there, but the the probable mean outcome is also on Mike Evans' side, it's it's Evans. But the nice thing is where these guys are being drafted. Why not both? You know, in, in a lot of situations, you can grab. I've got plenty of teams with Mike Evans and Michael Pittman because I love both these players. All right, this one's off of Instagram from Kramer8400. Is Jalen Tolbert worth drafting for fantasy? Jalen Tolbert, a rookie wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. I Best ball, absolutely. Okay. Uh, obviously, dynasty for sure, but just a redraft league. I am – skeptical on drafting Jalen Tolbert in that. I mean, you're, you're talking about a guy who is in the you know 14th, 15th round. So sure, uh, we always talk about you want to take a flyer on a guy who has a pathway to succeed week one, and also you don't have any problem cutting. So by all of that, Jalen Tolbert is a fine pick. He projects to be a starter from week one if was, Michael Gallup is not there. He was drafted in the third round. Third round wide receiver in a good offense. Plenty of reasons. So, should you draft Jalen Tolbert? Yes. But don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that Jalen Tolbert's going to be a superstar and grab him in your eighth round because he's a rookie sensation for good offense. I'm saying he's a really good pick where his ADP is right now on sleeper in your home leagues. All right, let's jump to a voicemail question. All right, so you've already made your opinion that you wouldn't draft Josh Allen in the second. Would you take your number one overall if you're playing in a super flex or a two QB league? Thank you. Bye. All right. So Josh Allen as the 101 in a super flex, Jason. That would be my pick. Uh, if I'm on a 101 in a super flex, uh, I, I, you know, most of the leagues that I still play in are, are half PPR, which makes it even better for taking a Josh Allen or a quarterback there. <laughs> Excellent. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Josh Stallion. <laughs> the difference between uh, you know the 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 situations here is that the pool dries up in a super flex. If you've got two quarterbacks that you can start, quarterbacks become a scarcity, a commodity that you can't just stream and get off the waiver wire and replace very easily. In which case, they do score the most points. He is awesome. He will probably you know I said earlier like Herbert could easily finish number one. In my head, after that, you started talking, and in my head, I literally said. Josh Allen could get injured. <laughs> that's no. the, because okay. that, like, yeah. like that's the path to me of I Josh Allen not finishing. I don't know if he can. If anyone in the NFL looks like their bones are grafted with adamantium, yeah, Josh, it's Josh Allen. Josh Allen is. He's. He's. I mean, he's sturdy. Josh Stallion. Yes, dude's a horse. Wait, do I? Do I need to? Hit <laughs> yes, it again? you need to hit it again. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right, uh, we got the people want to know, Jason. You are our go-to. Food expert. <clears throat> I am everyone's go-to food expert. Fair. Off of Instagram from Delord Petty. Thoughts on the Chaco Taco being discontinued? Oh, this is this is this is tough. okay. So this you, is tough. I already knew you knew about it. Of course, I knew. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Look at this. How, belly. What, am, what am I doing? How dare <laughs> I doubt your yeah, greatness? Thank you. Um, so here's the thing. It is sad. Chaco Taco has been just such a classic. You, you get the uh, the ice cream man driving by. When is the last time you ate a Choco Taco? Probably about two years ago. Okay. My current home, we, we moved, and my current home, the ice cream man doesn't come. Yeah, my, that's fair. My former home, ice cream man knew where we lived, man. <laughs> I mean, he knew our kids. He was, okay, first of all, we had his business card. We would call him. And if, but we didn't need to because he's there three, four times a day. I mean, it was a real problem on that. Third, that's the reason we moved because the ice cream man would not leave us alone. He drives by. He's like, "I'm only coming around here three more times today, <laughs> yeah. so he you would, better get in." He'll just drive out front and stop, play the music for about thirty minutes, and then go on if we don't come out. Um, so yeah, I I did I did enjoy a taco taco. My my wife told me the devastating news that it's going. It's sad because of the lore, but. I think it's a little overrated. Now, they haven't been great in the I, last couple of years. I don't know. They I cheaped mean, out on the production process. So the Choco Taco was basically, it's like, it's a waffle shell? Yeah, it's a waffle shell. It's basically ice cream in a waffle shell instead of a waffle cone. I mean, that's really what it is. <laughs> so, but it's shaped I like mean, a taco. Like, so if it's Tuesday, you got to eat it. How is, does, how is Taco Bell not have these? Ooh, maybe they're about to put them out of business. May, did they buy the, the patent? 
for the Choco Taco. Is there a patent on I don't, something like I don't know. Choco Taco? We're, uh, uh, we're working on the patent here for this chocolate taco. Craig in North Dakota sent a question through the website. PPR Keeper, should I keep Jalen Hurts in the 10th or Darnell Mooney in the 11th? I am in love with Jalen Hurts, so it's him. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. It's like, it, <laughs> that song ended abruptly. Yeah. Because, I thought there was going to be more. I mean, you don't need more. Um, to me, Jalen Hurts is uh, hes pretty much a sixth-round pick, seventh-round pick to me. In you know, it, it depends on whether you're in a home league, in a best ball league right now. His ADP can be um, all over the place. But wherever he's going in – you know, that that system, that format, which is usually the sixth round, I will be grabbing him. So, in the 10th round, heck yeah, brother. So, oh, thank you. Uh, currently, we have Darnell Mooney as our consensus wide receiver 21. And looking at Jalen Hurts, we have him at consensus QB6. So, too low. Too low. That's, that's too low? QB6. Yeah. You said QB6. I did. Um, Who do you have in front of Jalen Hurts? Well, let me tell you. I mean, Josh Stallion, we got that. Excellent. Uh, can we get a drop? <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah! Yes, I have uh, right now my quarterback rankings, and this is for four-point scoring. Okay. Is Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, Jalen Hurts. Whoa. Okay. Now, in six-point scoring. I didn't against- know you were bringing out the flamethrower on Saturday. Yeah, well, we'll we'll see. Uh, you know, he 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 drops in six point scoring. So that I mean, that's very easy then. You're QB three in the tenth round. Yeah. All right. I didn't know you were so insane. Yeah. I know, just so infatuated. Like, yeah, I knew you like you've been a Jalen Hurts guy. You've been the truther on the show. Yeah, I think he's a better quarterback than he gets credit for. I think right. his weapons are there. Uh, Sirianni showed that he can uh, do enough and. You know, and and also, you know, I'm a Devonta Smith guy. So yeah, when yeah, I love those true. two ascending players, I think I want to get in before the. You know, he was great last year, but I I think it, I think if you level up his greatness last year, you're going to have what you could still call a breakout, even though he's been good. Off of Instagram, this one's from Primetime Fifty Three. We got a debate in the league right now. Tiebreaker for playoff seating. Total points. Or head to head, total points. Yeah, I, I go there as well. Yeah, I mean, head to head is just if I if I get it, I get it because me and Mike play, and Mike beats me, and I get in the playoffs, but he beat me. That feels unfair. Except if it was the opposite, and over the course of the entire season. I outscored him, but he right. just happened to beat me by two points in one week, in week four. Oh, man, that feels completely unfair. And I think that everyone should be level-headed enough to understand that that's the clear, more fair solution. There's so much variance in fantasy football that I think that going with that one week for getting into the playoffs, I I understand the counter-argument was, well, in the playoffs, it's one week. But, I mean, look, we're trying to make the game as fun as possible, and I think that total points is the way to go. A question off of Instagram from, uh, where did it go from? Uh, Far on 57. Does your steering wheel melt from the heat in Arizona? I've heard rumors. <laughs> oh, man. Um, the steering wheels are weapons in the state of Arizona. <laughs> they are genuinely in some cars, it's different from car to car. It's just a weapon you know? against yourself, though. <laughs> right, yes. Uh, it's it's brutal. You, you. I mean, there have been there are people that wear gloves, that wear gloves yes. to drive, and they're not race car drivers. They just, <laughs> they just have to touch it. Yeah, and we're not talking just driving gloves. Like, there are people that will throw on some oven mitts I mean, and drive. There are big, fuzzy steering wheel covers that are yep. out here because I would rather – touch that than the heat of the nuclear i mean the inside of cars gets to 150 degrees and then if the sun is beaten down yeah it's even worse on that steering wheel you can get in and not be able to touch it or drive you got to pre-cool your car if you can yeah i recommend that this one's from instagram luke leo 97 
In a zero running back strategy, how soon should I look to draft my first running back? Some of that's going to be um, who's on the board. I mean, you you don't want to have – a lot of times people in a zero RB strategy, they say, well, you don't want to draft it before round eight or or whatever. They say this is the round. It's not RB, it's zero RB unless it's round X. And I think that is so foolish right? because then you might bypass – a good zero RB back like a Chase Edmonds or someone like that because, well, I'm not to the round where I said, you know, if he's slipping, uh, but in general, so so I, I say that as a caveat before I, I, I give my round. I think that if you're not taking a running back until round seven, that qualifies as zero RB. So a, a, a quick shout out. Sean Siegel is the guy that had the thought process of, well, maybe there's a way that we can assemble a team like this because forever in fantasy football, it's, the first round was just all running backs. Is there a way that you can take advantage of... Zig. Yeah, uh, yes. Take advantage of what's going on with the supply and the demand of the position, the fact that running backs are the ones that get hurt the most. And so Siegel is the one who who developed this strategy and kind of unleashed it upon the world. And the way he looked at it, he was always trying to get... The goal is four of the top 15 wide receivers onto his team so uh, like if if you really want to dive into zero running back i totally recommend checking out his work uh the his initial article on the whole entire strategy i don't pretend that i'm like an expert of of all of it but you're just you're trying to build as get as many elite wide receivers as you possibly can don't get caught up in the the name of the zero running back and it's like because you can still Cons and, and not just not just necessarily receivers. In in that strategy, you can grab a Mark Andrews, right? You know, or or a or a higher end quarterback. And really, you're stacking all of the other positions. While the the goal is that as these early running backs get injured and become less valuable for your opponents, your late round running backs yep. that were backups who now get thrust into starting positions become stronger. So your roster um, gets stronger as your you know, uh, opponents, your enemies' rosters get weaker as the season goes along. I think this works even better in managed leagues where you can go after the waiver wire pickups. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it, w when you're in best ball, it, it can work in all formats. It didn't work well last year because there were a lot of a lot of top wide receivers got injured as well. Um, but the uh, the reality is um, when you're in a managed league and on week six, we actually know who the great waiver wire pickup that might be surprising and nobody drafted in best ball, but like that's the running back. You go and grab him and add him to a roster full of great wide receivers, mm -hmm. a good quarterback, a good tight end. You get really, really strong. I do find though it it works best when you know, like it's funny. You people want to be like the others around them. You know, we're, sure. we're we're a tribal people. Yeah, and so it's like sometimes all the cool kids are doing zero RB and they're all in the same league. But if everybody's trying that strategy, it yes, does, that, it doesn't really work. Yes, that is a part of it. Is if there are multiple people going with that strategy, it's going to be way harder for you to get those top wide receivers because of the supply and the demand. Uh, so just an example, on our our most recent mock draft or a previous mock, it was a PPR, and I went Jefferson, Mike Evans, T. Higgins, Mike Williams. That's how I started. And then I took Clyde Edwards-Alaire and Kareem Hunt in the, the next rounds. Is that a zero running back team? I mean, I, I don't know, but I just I was trying my best to get four of the top 15 guys, my top 15, and have – the points that those guys can put up on a weekly basis so dominant that it makes up for the the lack that I will have at the beginning of the year for my running back scoring. Yeah, and, and the unfortunate thing for you is like when you grade those teams after the draft, right? They don't look as good yes. because you are going to be adding running backs to your roster that change over the course of the season. Uh, so don't don't judge don't judge too quickly there. We got uh, this one's from Clayton in Atlanta, Georgia. What are you guys' thoughts on drafting Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon? And we have a shout out to my old youth pastor Kyle, <laughs> Ky right. Kylie Wiley oh, over this, here. Oh, this is uh, the Borgogan. Oh, okay. Look, 
And, I mean, this is not meant to be an insult in the slightest. Uh, Please insult him. But, like, if you if you stacked us in a line and you said, <laughs> which one of us used to be a youth pastor? Yeah. 100 out of 100 people get that <laughs> people right. People know. People know who it is. Yeah. <laughs> you play uh you play some acoustic guitar there, Kyle? I play none. Oh, Ooh, none. Shocking. You don't even not even the four chords you need to be a youth pastor? G C D E minor. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, there it is. Those skinny jeans gave you away. Um <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so, so wait, did he have a question? Yeah, dra- what are your thoughts on drafting both of the Green Bay running backs? Oof. I don't like it at all. Okay. To me, Aaron Jones is being drafted with enough draft capital. You know, he's like sixth round pick where you are. You mean A.J. Dillon? Yes, yeah, sorry, A.J. Dillon. It's like, you got, where are we getting <laughs> Jones in the sixth? Yeah. Sign me up. No, A.J. Dillon is being drafted with enough capital as you're going to need him to be a flex starter. Um, And and then and then you're really, when, when you draft A.J. Dillon, we don't hope for injury. But, yes, you are. I mean, when you draft him, you're hoping he gets the role. Uh, not n- negativity towards. You're hoping that Aaron Jones wins the lottery <laughs> and just goes on a on a cruise right. around the world. Has a change of of uh, heart and occupation. Yes. Yeah. Um. But that is too much draft capital to put into one backfield. Uh, I've seen these situations work. Um. Where you're talking about you know a a, a ninth tenth round pick. Um. You know and and grab a backfield together I don't even like doing it there uh when I leave my draft I'm not looking to have multiple backs from the same backfield I just think it's bad strategy all right we're gonna get out of here on this one Instagram M G Yamps McGamps McGam McGamps 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 wants to know are there multiple J Grizzes or just the one and there's only one. I mean, the cardboard bear extraordinaire. He's he's holding the down over there. How dare you think there's more than one? I mean, this, this is, is this is Highlander. There can be only one. That's like saying how many Mike Wrights are there? Yeah, I mean, how many Jason? There's Moore's? really like technically a lot of us. Mike well, Mike Wright, sure. more common name than you. Than okay, you would think. I, I will grant. I will grant this listener. Maybe there are other. Bears that go by Jay Grizz. Right. You know, maybe the the San Diego Zoo named their grizzly bear Jay. Right. Okay, so maybe there's another, but there's only one of you, bud. There is only one cardboard bear extraordinaire, and he, we love you. He does love going on road trips. And being left behind. So, <laughs> <laughs> what? How can you, can't, you can't tell people that? Shh, keep it secret. We would never keep do it that. Secret. It's a prestige situation. Yeah, there's only... <laughs> we leave the clone one. behind. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> prestige. Um, all right, that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining. Remember the Ultimate Draft Kit. It's available for you right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. We will be back on Monday because we are launching into five shows a week. And you will get to hear the uh, live show yep. that's happening tonight in Los Angeles. It's sold out. Uh, we will be airing that on Monday morning. And I'll just tell you, I'll give you a little tease. There might be some ice. <sighs> there might be some fire. But I do know there is one amazing drop. TBD. Uh, thank you for joining us, everybody. We will see you next time. UltimateDraftKit.com. Enjoy the weekend. Stay safe, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.